Hello ladies and gentlemen, the book of the week is a natural history, general and particular, containing the history and theory of the earth, a general history of man, the brute creation, vegetables, minerals, by George Louis Leclerc, Count of Buffon, published in London in the early 1800s. In the 1600s, most naturalists believed that the world was a few thousand years old and that species were created separately and organized into an unchanging hierarchy with humans positioned just below the angels. The author of this book challenged outdated assumptions, providing a new approach to genesis of Earth as well as life on the planet. No single naturalist of the 1700s epitomizes the revolutionary changes that Enlightenment brought to the study of nature more than George Louis Leclerc. Gifted with vivid imagination and inclined to resolve doubts with brilliant hypotheses, he could not adapt to a strictly scientific method. Buffon's important merit is the creation of a method for classification of the universal content of nature on Earth and the initiative of systematic scientific research into every branch of living things. He created the definitions of the species subdivided into types, families, varieties and races. Buffon's observations gave impetus to deeper scientific research, putting an end to the confusion of positive theology and natural science. This edition comes richly illustrated with 25 colored engravings, after the author's brief biography it starts with the history and theory of the Earth, followed by examinations of other surface-related theories and their proofs. In the field of geology, Buffon systematized the factual material known at the time and developed a number of theoretical questions about the development of the globe and its surface. He put forward the hypothesis of the formation of the globe as a fragment torn from the sun by the fall of a comet on it and gradually cooling to the very center. Buffon exaggerated the importance of the geological activity of the sea and underestimated the volcanic phenomena and tectonic movements in the history of the earth. He owns the hypothesis of the development of the globe and its surface. Page 205 leads us to the natural history of man. Buffon, along with some other scholars, were believers in monogenism, the concept that all races have a single origin. After describing and elaborating on the varieties of the human species, Buffon brings us to the kingdom of animals, with dedicated details and explanations occupying the rest of the book. Overall, this book is somewhat poetic representation of nature, written in high and beautiful style. Observations of animal life are rarely collected by the author himself, but are wittily processed, although not from a physiological point of view. Author expressed progressive ideas about the variability of species under the influence of environmental conditions such as climate, nutrition, etc. In other words, he proposed a sort of proto-evolution theory, while he thought that this process could not produce radically new kinds of species, he did claim that it could account for the geographical distribution of similar species around the world. Man descended from monkey, a popular thesis that is usually associated with Charles Darwin and Darwinists, but it was spoken before by George Louis Buffon. Buffon's theories were visionary yet doomed, because they were based on the relatively insufficient evidence that 18th century naturalists had at their disposal. His estimate of the Earth age turned out to be far too young, yet his theories foreshadowed some of the most important developments in the natural sciences in the decades that followed his death. 
all the way to the Darwin's theory of evolution. It may be true that no single idea of Buffon's has withstood the test of time, but his works still remain a milestone of science. Once again, the book of the week is a natural history, general and particular containing the history and theory of the Earth. Thank you for watching.